Okay, so let's talk about uh, <clears throat> your governor. My oh, old governor. Oh, my oh, old I pal, uh, Rick Perry. He has been spreading <laughs> a conspiracy <laughs> theory. <laughs> that uh, he is a, a, a brother Aggie with Mr. Flores, so if you meet Mr. Perry, use small words, please. Oh, uh, that, oh man! So Perry's theory is somehow that our president, that sounds personal, America's president, is behind this humanitarian crisis at the border. And today, this morning on New Day, CNN's Kate Baldwin called him on it. Do you really honestly believe, as you said in that interview last month, that the administration might be in on this somehow? I mean, you're suggesting there's some kind of conspiracy here. No, what I'm, what I'm suggesting is that this administration and their words and their actions or the lack thereof are part of the problem. I think you're putting the words of conspiracy in my mouth, which I did not say. No, you actually did say the word, I hate to be conspiratorial, but I mean, and how I, do you move I that hate, many people from Central America? And I hate to be America? conspiratorial. To quote the governor, <laughs> oops, uh, it is painful to see a belly flop on national television. Uh, Texas gosh. Congressman Bill Flores is with us, and California <laughs> Congresswoman Karen Best. They are in the crossfire tonight. Okay, so, Congressman, I have been very rough on our president for not going to the border. Mm -hmm. I think the critics, largely in your party, have been right. He should go there and see for himself. Can you be equally candid about your governor? These conspiracy theories are nutty. He even suggested that somehow Syrian terrorists are coming across that border. You, you, please tell me that you don't subscribe to that kind of uh, really I demagogic don't, I don't subscribe language. to the conspiracy theory, and I didn't hear the language, so I don't know what he said. I, I do know that, th that some of the um, uh, things that, that Governor Perry said were exactly on point. Number one is send the National Guard. Now, the Governor Perry can call it the National Guard, but the federal government provides the money. Right. And so we need to have why, the Why doesn't he deploy the Guard? He's right. Who's the commander in chief of the Texas National Guard, just for the folks it's watching? It's Governor Perry. But why then, doesn't he call them out? Well, we're already spending $1.3 million a week to do the federal government's job because they... There has the never been an occasion in American history, modern history at least, when a governor has called out the Guard and not been reimbursed by Washington. The feds pay that. Janet Napolitano, the Democratic governor of Arizona, she had a border crisis. Mm -hmm. She didn't whine about W, right. uh, President Bush. She called out the Guard. <laughs> And right. the feds, of course, reimbursed her, as they should. So, and I, if, I think if Perry calls him out, I know the, the feds will The reimburse. second thing that Governor Perry said is that the reason we have this is because the president has not enforced the laws that are on the books. For instance, if you go back to the deferred action memo that he wrote in June of 2012, he basically sent a signal to Latin America, come north, and we'll leave you alone. We'll just we'll welcome, you, welcome you with open arms, and we'll find well, a place where you live. Let me, let me cut Governor Perry and his magnificent hair, a little <laughs> slack, because I can understand his frustration. Um, I have a letter that he sent to the president yes. in 2012 talking about, as your administration is fully aware, there is a surge of unaccompanied illegal minors entering the United States asking for help. He, he was ignored. Doesn't he have a legitimate gripe, a legitimate frustration here with the administration? Well, you know, actually what I believe the president suggested is, is that he talked to his colleagues from Texas, no offense, mm -hmm. Representative Flores, to, to do something. <laughs> well, good. So, to do something. Because right. maybe, seriously, if, there, if you want money for the National Guard, maybe you could put it in the president's proposal that he's put forward that calls for additional resources. And in fact, it certainly calls for a major increase to border enforcement. But I go back to my original point a few minutes ago. I just don't think that is going to be the solution because you have the young people coming looking for the Border Patrol. Right looking for the National Guard. So how does that prevent anything? Mm -hmm. That just doesn't seem to be the solution. Congressman? We have to work with the Central American governments. Yeah. Well, let me yeah. say this. The president did ask the Texas delegation for a solution, and he's going to get a solution from the Texas delegation, as well as, hopefully, all of the House Republicans and hopefully some of the House Democrats. Has Governor Perry called you the way the president asked him to? No, he has not called me, but I'm sure he's called some Isn't of them. Isn't that a lack of leadership? He's called CNN, he's called Fox News, he's called every everybody with a camera. He's, he's total media accessibility, he's which we appreciate. His image but why hasn't he done his well, doggone job there, and called you? The challenge of 38 of us to call. He's probably started at the It's top a lot of, of numbers that. for a guy with a tiny brain. <laughs> no, I don't care. Oh, come on. Let me, uh, that, that hurts. He's so. cleaning up his image. He's auditioning for <laughs> his... All right. He's got his glasses. He's beating up on Governor Perry. Here's what the 